Hello, welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, Natural Resources Ministry collaborating with GLSC to regulate Peruni landing business operations. Hinterland, poor and remote communities to benefit from U.S. $17 million GRIF project. And we update you on Mashramani activities. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Here's our first report. Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Simone Brooms, is collaborating with the Ghana Lands and Surveys Commission to regulate business operations at the Peruni Landing. Tiffany Rogers was there and filed this report. While the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission grants license for business operations in mining districts, the permission does not include the establishment of permanent structures, Minister Brooms noted. So all these buildings that is going up around here, they're going up as a, at a risk. No permission. Meaning to say if somebody come tomorrow and say you got to take it down, you got to take it down. Minister Brooms is examining how business operations at mining landings, particularly Peruni, can be better regularized. She made a follow-up visit to Peruni on Monday, accompanied by Commissioner of the Ghana Lands and Surveys Commission, Trevor Ben. Ben encouraged operators to visit GLSC's Bartica office to regularize their status. For those of you who want to make um, the area your residence, your home, you have no security of tenure. You have no security to the land that you're on. And the only way you could do that is by applying to get uh, a, a full lease for the land that you're occupying. Peruni Landing is a thriving mining community in Mazaruni, Mining District 3. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. Commission of Inquiry recommendations are guiding development works at the Mazaruni prison. Here's more from Stefan Gabriel. Living quarters earmarked for prison staff at the modernized Mazaruni prison have been completed and more are due for completion this year. Acting Director of Prisons, Gladwin Samuels. So, 12 houses were constructed last year and an additional 8 will be constructed in 2018. Um, last weekend, the advertisement went out for um, the first four of those 8 houses. The tender is supposed to be open this week, so more than likely the contract should be awarded very soon. The acting director noted, along with the houses and the installation of its new generator and prospective solar panels, there are plans to increase the number of hours during which electricity is provided to the island facility. This will improve its electronic surveillance system and increase the opportunities for its skills training. What that will do as well is that it will increase our ability to be able to offer skill training to prisoners. Because Electricity was generally provided during the hours of darkness from 18 to 6. Um, it restricted the um, capacity of the prison to offer training in terms of um, carpentry and um, other such areas that would require the use of power tools when power was not adequately available. We were also looking at the installation of um, solar panels, which will complement um, the generators, especially for our um, CCTV expansion, which will be part of our 2018 project as well. According to Sam Wills, these works are in keeping with the budget request of the Guyanic Prison Service and the recommendations from the Commission of Inquiry. For InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Residents in hinterland, poor and remote communities will benefit from improved and increased internet access and telecommunication services through the Hinterland e-services e-access project, which will be executed under the U.S. $17 million Ghana Red Plus Investment Fund. 
Details from Stacy Carmichael. Through the GRIF project, remote communities in Region 9 will not only benefit from ICT services, but from power supply, as Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes explained to villagers during a community outreach in Ruperty. We are committed to provide not only the equipment, but the power, because everybody got cell phones that need to be recharged, computers that will need to be recharged, and to access the internet, of course, you have to have the power. So, very briefly, I've tried to give you a vision of the direction we're going with. As you know, we've had radio stations set up in many parts of the hinterland, and we are really working to make sure that we can all communicate better. Chairman of the National Data Management Authority, Floyd Levi, in response to concerns raised by residents of Ruperty Region 9, said when the e-government internet service is established in the community, there will be 24-hour internet access and increased bandwidth. In our vision, not only must you make this um, system available to all members of your community, but this, the ICT hub must be functioning at all times. Because you never know when someone has an important uh, bit of business or emergency to attend to. Um, as Minister explained, individuals ought to be able to go to the community ICT hub, do their business, do their um, educational research, or if there's a health problem and they needed to contact the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, that facility um, should be available to them. While over at Toka, the NDMA chairman encouraged village leaders to use the technology they have available to them for the advancement of the village. On the people side, we want to have the residents also use for their own benefit, their own upliftment, whether it's educational. I know I see a lot of young people here um, who I'm sure would want to be for new education in something, in anything that you got the mind to. The internet offers that opportunity. The Toka ICT hub was established some three years ago and residents were informed that the ICT services will be extended through the e-government unit. The Toka Village Council expressed gratitude to the NDMA for the contribution of two laptop computers for the ICT hub. Reporting for InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael from Toka Village. Renata LaFleur joins us to tell us that Region 1's health sector is striving to improve its performance in 2018. The region's health officer, Cordell McWatt, says indicators will be set for various programs in the sector to ensure that 2018's targets are achieved. We want something that we can measure at the end of 2018. We'll be able to see that um, we would have achieved this, we would have projected this, and we would have achieved this. And it's not based on forecasting um, that we are, uh, or it's an assumption that we'll see that oh, we had a good year because um, we basically assumed that. Uh, we had a reduction in chronic disease or we had a reduction in maternal uh, deaths or infant deaths. According to Dr. McQuatt, five indicators for each program will be set up. These will target the broader areas such as the family health program and address issues including anemia and postnatal care, among others. For instance, one of our indicators was to reduce the, um, the incidence of uh, anemia among pregnant women. Uh, we would have looked at our present state and we would have asked that, you know, we'll decrease that by 20%. And of course, he set indicators that are workable, reachable. And um, so the end of 2018, matter of fact, we will be monitoring that um, on a quarterly basis, then half yearly. Then at the end of the year, uh, we'll be able to see um, how would that have impacted on our maternal deaths, or infant deaths. The RHO added that though there were some unfortunate occurrences of maternal deaths, 2017 has improved when compared to 2016. However, there is still room for improvement and efforts are geared towards that. Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. The Ministry of Business and the Inter-American Development Bank today hosted its first electronic single window workshop at the Pegasus Hotel under the focus Developing a Roadmap to Electronic Single Window in Guyana. Crystal Stahl has the details. Minister of Business Dominique Gaskin explained the project once implemented will transform the way business is done in the country. This is what businesses in Guyana want and this is what Guyana needs to facilitate trade and other business transactions in a way that is efficient and cost effective and clean. And by clean, I mean free from corrupt practices. 
Gaskin assured that the venture will not be one to fade away and therefore encouraged stakeholders to take ownership of the project. We have an important mission and it is we who have to get it right. And I'm not suggesting that we alone have to develop the single window system or that we have no friends or partners to help us and to guide us in how we develop this system. We need to own this and we need to believe in this because if we don't, there will be no electronic single window system in Guyana anytime soon. The minister commended the South Korea Technical Cooperation and the IDB for funding the preparatory work of the project. The backing, he noted, came as a result of pushing international trade and economic development around the world. The workshop aims to identify and analyze conceptual models and challenges for the implementation of the ESW. Reporting for InfoHub, Crystal Stahl. In keeping with Mashomani activities, arrivals from various countries received a taste of Guyanese culture at the CJIA's arrival launch. Natisha Isaacs has more. The welcome was organized by the Guyana Tourism Authority, and featured performances by the National School of Dance and renditions from pan player Mr. Andrew Tindo. Info Hub spoke to some visitors about their expectations for Mashramani 2018. It's my first time back home to Guyana and it's my first time to Mash, so yeah, man, I'm just expecting good vibes. Well, during Mashramani, the culture. Costume, the dress code, and everything is better. I like the Mashramani, but I haven't seen it in 25 years. Well, I will go out and enjoy it and see how it goes. The Golden Arrowhead and other paraphernalia was distributed to the enthusiastic crowd who were seen dancing to the music and enjoying the displays. Soka sensation Queen of Bacchanal, Destra Garcia, was among the passengers welcomed at the CJIA this morning. She expressed her pleasure in returning to Guyana. All that energy, all the Guyanese vibe, you know I love this country. For InfoHub, Leticia Isaacs. Here's our final report. The Ghana Police Force is informing members of the public that in order to facilitate activities relating to the Marshall Manning Float Parade 2018, the following intersections will be closed to vehicular traffic from six hours until the end of the day's activities. Cam Street and Thomas Land, Albert Street and Wolford Avenue, Sandy Bab and Vlasingen Road, Sandy Bab and J.B. Singh, Bar Street and Vlasingen Road, Dowding and Vlasingen Road, Station Street and Vlasingen Road, Lamaha Street and Vlasingen Road, Wolford Avenue and Vlasingen Road, Wolford Avenue and J.B. Singh, Anira and Irving Streets, Laluni and Irving Streets. The following roads will also be closed to facilitate the float parade. Crown and Irving Streets, Almond and Irving Street, Forsha and Irving Street, Church Street and Vlasingen Road, Nert and Vlasingen Roads, Regent Street and Vlasingen Road, South and Vlasingen Road, Brickdam and Vlasingen Road, Homestretch Avenue and Vlasingen Road, Hatfield and Vlasingen Road, Mandela Avenue and Vlasingen Road. Any inconvenience caused is regretted. Please note that you can check out the Match Night event at the Providence Stadium tonight and Stag Stage 6 at the National Park this evening and tomorrow as well. Or check our website or Facebook page for more details as we bring you updates on Republic Day and Match Romania activities. Thanks for watching and remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.